Blessed be our God. Forever and ever. Amen. God, our Father, you did not abandon us to the power of darkness, but in your mercy redeemed us. Protect, free, and sanctify us by your Son, who suffered and died for us, and whom you drew out of death. Jesus Christ, our Lord, who in the unity of the Holy Spirit lives and works now and forever. Amen. Good evening. The first reading of our Good Friday of the Lord's Passion from the prophet Isaiah. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be raised high and greatly exalted. Even as many were amazed at him, so marred had was his look beyond human semblance, and his appearance beyond that of the sons of man so shall he startle many nations. Because of him, kings shall stand speechless, for those who have not been told shall see. Those who have not heard shall ponder it. Who would believe what we have heard? To whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up like a sapling before him, like a shoot from the parched earth. There was in him no stately bearing to make us look at him, nor appearance that would attract us to him. He was spurned and avoided by people, a man of suffering, accustomed to infirmity, one of those from whom people hid their faces, spurned, and we held him in no esteem. Yet it was our infirmities that he bore our suffering that he endured while we thought of him as stricken, as one smitten by God and afflicted. But he was pierced for our offenses, crushed for our sins. Upon him was the chastisement that makes us whole. By his stripes we were healed. We had all gone astray like sheep, each following his own way. But the Lord laid upon him the guilt of us all. Though he was harshly treated, he submitted and opened not his mouth like a lamb led to the slaughter or a sheep before the shearers. He was silent and opened not his mouth. Oppressed and condemned, he was taken away. And who would have thought any more of his destiny? When he was cut off from the land of the living and smitten for the sin of his people, a grave was assigned him among the wicked and a burial place with evil doers, though he had done no wrong nor spoken any falsehood. But the Lord was pleased to crush him in infirmity. If he gives his life as an offering for sin, he shall see his descendants in a long life and the will of the Lord shall be accomplished through him. Because of his affliction, he shall see the light in fullness of days. Through his suffering, my servant shall justify many, and their guilt he shall bear. Therefore, I will give him his portion among the great, and he shall divide the spoils with the mighty, because he surrendered himself to death and was counted among the wicked, and he shall take away the sins of many and win pardon for their offenses. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. <clears throat> Our responsorial psalm is from Psalm 31, and the responsorial is, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Father, Father, into your hands, hands I commend my spirit. spirit. 
In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your justice, rescue me. Into your hands I commend my spirit. You will redeem me, O Lord, O faithful God. Father, Father God, God, I your hands. hands. I, I commend my spirit. spirit. For all my foes, I am an object of reproach, a laughing stock to my neighbors and a dread to my friends. They who see me abroad flee from me. I am forgotten like the unremembered dead. I am like a dish that is broken. Father, I am to your hands. I commend my spirit. But my trust is in you, O Lord. I say, you are my God. In your hands is my destiny. Rescue me from the clutches of my enemies and my persecutors. Father, in your hands, I command my spirit. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your kindness. Take courage and be stout-hearted, all you who hope in the Lord. Father, in your hands, I command my spirit. Our epistle is from the book of Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has been similarly tested in every way, yet without sin. So let us confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and to find grace for timely help. In the days when Christ was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obeyed him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the Lord be on your lips and in your heart, that you may worthily and well proclaim his holy gospel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Christ, who became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the, the, the name which is above every other name. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel according to John, 18th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to where there was a garden into which he and his disciples entered. Judas, his betrayer, also knew the place because Jesus had often met there with his disciples. So Judas got a band of soldiers and guards from the chief priests and the Pharisees and went there with lanterns, torches, and weapons. Jesus, knowing everything that was going to happen to him, went out and said to them, Whom are you looking for? They answered him, Jesus the Nazarene. He said to them, I am. Judas' his betrayer was also with them. When he said to them, I am, they turned away and fell to the ground. So he, he again asked them, Whom are you looking for? They said, Jesus the Nazarene. Jesus answered, I told you that I am. So if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill what he had said. I have not lost any of those you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it, struck the high priest's slave, and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, put your sword into a scabbard. Shall I not drink the cup that the Father gave me? So the band of soldiers, the tribune, and the Jewish guards seized Jesus, bound him, and brought him to Annas first. He was the father-in-law of Cephas, 
who was high priest that year, who was Caiaphas, who had counseled the Jews that it was better that one man should die rather than the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Now the other disciple was known to the high priest and he entered the courtyard of the high priest with Jesus. But Peter stood at the gate outside, so the, the, so the other disciple, the acquaintance of the high priest, went out and spoke to the gatekeeper and brought Peter in. Then the man who was the gatekeeper said to Peter, you are not one of this man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the slaves and the guards were standing around a charcoal fire that, made, that they had made because it was cold and warming themselves. Peter was also standing there keeping warm. The high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his doctrine. Jesus answered him, I've spoken publicly publicly to the world. I have always taught it in the synagogue or in the temple area where all the Jews gather. And in secret I have said nothing. Why ask me? Ask those who heard me what I have said what I said to them. They said they know that I they know what I said. When he had said this one, he had said this. <laughs> one of the temple guards standing there struck Jesus and said is this the way you answer the high priest? Jesus answered him, if, if I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong, but if I have spoken rightly, why, why do you strike me? Then Annas sent bound to Cephas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing there keeping warm, and they said to him, you are not one of, the, 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 one of his disciples, are you? He denied it, and I said, I am not. Correction. He denied it and said, I am not. And one of the slave, slaves of the high priest, a relative of the one who here Peter had cut off, said, didn't I see you in the garden with him? Again, Peter denied it, and immediately the cock crowed. Then they brought Jesus from Caphas to the Praetorium. It was morning, and they themselves did not enter the Praetorium in order not to be defiled so that, that, so that they could eat the Passover. So Pilate came to them and said, and said, what charge do you bring against this man? They answered and said to him, if he were, were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. At this, Pilate said to them, take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. And the Jews answered him, we do not have the right to execute anyone in order that the word of Jesus might be fulfilled and that he said, indicating the kind of death he would die. So Pilate went back to the Praetorium and summoned Jesus and said to him, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, do you say this on your own, or have you told, have, have others told you about me? Pilate answered, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests handed you over to me. What have you done, Jesus? What have you done? Jesus answered, my kingdom does not belong to this world. If my kingdom did belong to this world, my attendants would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not here. So Pilate said to him, Then you are a king, Jesus answered. You say I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? When he had said this, he again went out to the Jews and said to them, I find no guilt in him, but you have a custom that I release one prisoner to you at Passover. Do you want me to release, do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? They cried out, they cried out again, not this one, not this one, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a revolutionary. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him scourged. 
and the soldiers wore a crown out of thorns and placed it on his head and clothed him in a purple cloak. And they came, and they came to him and said, Hail, King of the Jews! And they struck him repeatedly. Once more Father went out and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out, of, out to you, so that you may know that I can find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple cloak. And he said to them, Behold the man. When the two priests and guards saw him, they cried out, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no guilt in him. The Jews answered, We have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die because he made himself the son of God. Now when Pilate heard this statement, he became even more afraid and went back into the praetorium. Went back into the praetorium and said to Jesus, Where are you from? Jesus did not answer. So Pilate said to him, Do you not speak to me? Do you not know that I have power to release you and I have power to crucify you? Jesus, Jesus answered him, You would have no power on me if, if it had not been given to you from above. For this reason, the one who handed me over to you has the greatest sin. Consequently, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release him, you are not a friend of Caesar. <laughs> Everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and seated him on the judge's bench in the place called Stone Pavement, in Hebrew, Gabbatha. It was a preparation day for Passover, and it was about noon. He said to the Jews, Behold your king. They cried out, Take him away, take him away, crucify him. When Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus and carrying the cross themselves, he went out to what is called the place of the skull. In Hebrew, Golgotha. They, they, there they crucified him and with two others, one on either side with Jesus in the middle. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus the Nazarene, the King of Jews. But he said, I am the King of the Jews. Pilate answered, what, I, what I've written, I've written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four shares, a share for each soldier. They also took his tunic, but the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top down. So they said to one another, let's not tear it, but cast this lot, this lot for, its, for, it, for it to see whose it will be. In order that the passage of scripture might be fulfilled, it says, they divide my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. This is where the soldiers, this is what the soldiers did. Standing by the cross of Jesus, where his mother and his mother's sister Mary the wife of Clopas and Mary and the Mary of Magdala. When Jesus saw his mother and disciples there whom he loved, he said, and the disciple there whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her into his home. And after this, aware that everything was now finished, in order that the scripture might be filled, Jesus said, I thirst. And there was a vessel filled with common wine, so they put a spoon of soap and wine on a sprig of house and put it into his mouth. When Jesus had taken the wine, he said, it is finished. And bowing his head, he handed over the spirit. Here all kneeling paused for a short time. Now since it was preparation day, in order that the bodies might not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for the Sabbath day, 
that week was a solemn was a solemn one. The Jews asked Pilate that their legs be broken and they be taken down. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and then of the other, other one who was crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one soldier thrust his lance into his side and immediately blood and water flowed out. An eyewitness has testified and his testimony is true. He knows that he is speaking the truth so that you also may come to believe. For this happened so that the scripture passage might be fulfilled. Not a bone of it will be broken. And again, another passage said, they will look upon him whom they have pierced. After this, Joseph of Arimathea secretly, secretly the disciple of Jesus for fear of Jews as found that he could remove the body of Jesus. Pilate, and Pilate committed it, so he came and took his body. Nicodemus, the one who had, who had first come to him at night, also came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloe with a weighing about 100 pounds. They took the body of Jesus and bound with burial cloths, along with the spices, according to the Jewish burial custom. Now in, in the place where he had crucified, he, he had been crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb, in which, in which no one had been, yet been buried. So they laid Jesus there because of the Jewish preparation day. The tomb was closed, and the, for the tomb was close by. These are the words of the Holy Gospel, words of eternal life. Christ in the Lord. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We just heard read to us the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is Good Friday. This is the day on which we remember Jesus' death for our salvation. Our Old Testament reading was from Isaiah chapter 52. I want to underscore the last portion of it. This, as I've been talking about the last few weeks, is a, a, a prefigurement of the coming of Christ, uh, where we're hearing from Isaiah about a figure he calls the suffering servant. And here we hear, because of his affliction, he shall see the light in fullness of days. Through his suffering, my servant shall justify me, and their guilt shall he bear. Therefore, I will give him, give him his portion among the great, and he shall divide the spoils with the mighty, because he surrendered himself to death and was counted among the wicked. And he shall take away the sins of many and win pardon for their offenses. This is a prefigurement, of course, of what we just heard uh, in the Passion of Christ. Christ died for our sins. Imagine the wonder of this. Someone who was without sin died for the, for the sins of others. He totally gave himself up for us. And not just in a manner of inconvenience or something like this. He allowed himself to be tortured to death on a cross. To be treated in the worst imaginable way and suffer what we know was an agonizing death. He did that for us. In our epistle for today, we hear from Hebrews. And what I want to emphasize there also is the last portion of, uh, from Hebrews chapter 4. Son, though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Now the word obey appears in that sentence twice. First, it refers to the faithfulness of Jesus, his obedience to his Father. This was his mission. He knew what was coming, and like any person because he was human as well as divine, he dreaded the pain that was coming. But he knew that he had to do this. He knew that this was his mission. He knew because of his faithfulness to the Father 
that he had to go through with it. And then, the author of Hebrew tells us, he, Jesus, became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. So we obey Jesus in the way that Jesus obeyed his Father. Jesus gave of himself totally out of obedience to his Father and faithfulness to his mission. The passion of Jesus that we just read from the Gospel according to John in chapters 18 and 19 shows Jesus following through with his obedience and his faithfulness. And what he teaches us by his example is that we too should follow suit. We should be obedient to him. We should be faithful to him. And therefore, we should be willing to give of ourselves to others so that they can see the light of Christ shine through all of us. Let's pray for a moment in silent prayer. Dear people of God, our Heavenly Father sent His Son into the world, not to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved, that all who believe in Him might be delivered from the power of sin and death, and become heirs with Him of everlasting life. We pray, therefore, for people everywhere according to their needs. Our response will be, Lord have mercy. For the Holy Church, let us pray, brothers and sisters, for the Holy Church of God, that our Lord and God grant it peace in all the world. Unite and protect it and grant us life and quietness and safety to the praise of his name. Almighty eternal God, in Christ you, you reveal your glory to all people. Protect what your, mer your mercy has created, that your church and all the world may per persevere in steadfast faith. We ask this <coughs> through Christ our Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For our bishop, let us pray for our bishop, <coughs> Maurice Scott Boy and Bishop Dasha. The fellowship of bishops, all men and women, in the apostolic ministry, and for all the people of God, Almighty, ever-living God, your spirit sanctifies and governs the whole body of the church. Hear our prayer for our bishop and for all, the minister, all who minister in your church. Give them the grace to serve you faithfully. We ask you, Christ our Lord. Lord, Lord <coughs> For the catechumens, let us pray for all who prepare for baptism. <clears throat> Our God and Father may open their hearts with his word. He grant them his forgiveness of sins and baptism and receiving them in, into his house that they may find life in Jesus Christ. Our Lord Almighty, everlasting God, you continue to lead people to your church, grant to all who prepare Prepare for baptism to growing in faith and in knowledge. Let them be born again from the spring of baptism and accept them as your children. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the unity of the Christians, let, let us pray for our brothers and sisters who believe in Christ, that our Lord and God may lead them on the way to truth and unity, unity, them in the unity of the Holy Church. Almighty, ever-living God, you alone can overcome the division and, and grant the unity. Have mercy on your Christian people. Satisfied, sanctified by the one baptism, 
unite them in the faith in your son and in the bonds of love we shall and we ask this through Christ our Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. For all who do, who do not believe in Christ, let us pray for all who do not believe in Christ, that the Holy Spirit illumine them and lead them on the way of salvation. Almighty, ever living God, assist all who do not confess Christ that they may live in integrity before you and find the truth. Grant to us that we perceive the mystery of our faith and more and more and more and more grow in love towards each other and make us faithful witnesses of your goodness. We ask this in Christ our Lord. Lord, Lord have <coughs> For all who do not believe in God, let us pray for those who do not know God that with his help they may find, they may follow their conscience and thereby come to the God and the Father of all people. Almighty, ever-living God, you created the human beings that might seek you and find their rest in you. We recognize in the many acts of your compassion and in deeds of your faithful ones that the people, despite all obstacles, may find you and confess you to be the true God and Father. We ask through Christ, uh, this through Christ our Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. For those in authority, let us pray for those who govern us, our Lord God, and may break their minds and their hearts according to their will, that they may seek true peace and freedom to the benefit of all people. Almighty, ever living God, that the hearts of people and the rights of nations are in your hands. In your hand, graciously look on those who govern us that in all the world's safety and freedom may dwell. Welfare, peoples, and liberty of worship. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Oh, have mercy. <laughs> for all people in need, let us pray to God, the Almighty Father, for all who are in need of his help. May he purify the world from all error, take away the illnesses, dispel the hunger, solve unjust fetters, give safety to the homeless, a happy return to the pilgrims and travelers, help to the sick, and life eternal to the dying. Almighty, ever living God, comforter of the sorrowful, strength of those who suffer, hear all who call upon you in, this, in their affliction, let their experience let them experience your mercy in every need. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Lord, have mercy. This is the wood of the cross on which hung the Savior of the world. Come, let us worship. This is the cross, the wood of the cross on which hung the Savior of the world. Come, Come let, let us worship. worship. This is the wood of the cross on which hung the Savior of the world. Come, Come let, let us worship. worship. We adore your cross, O Lord. We praise and glorify your resurrection. For behold, the covenant of the wood of the 
And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, you hear those who call upon you, and you know the prayers of those who remain silent. We thank you that by the passion and death of your Son, you have called us from afar to your people. Increase our faith and forgive us our sins. Strengthen us through your Holy Spirit, Keep us in the truth, teach what we do not know, fill in what we lack, and strengthen what we have recognized. At the end of our days, unite us with your saints through Christ, our crucified and risen Lord. May abundant blessing, O Lord, we pray, descend upon your people who have honored the death of your Son and the hope of their resurrection. May pardon come. Comfort be given, holy faith increase, and everlasting redemption be made secure through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always.